In this lecture, you learn how to perform a point in time restore. This allows you to restore your database instance to a specific point in time by creating a new DB instance. It's important to note that whenever you restore a database instance, it is automatically associated with the default parameter group. So if you had made some custom parameter and options group, you need to reattach the option group and the parameter group to the database instance. So you can do this while you are performing the restore. So in SQL Server, the transaction logs allows you to perform point in time restore. So what RDS does is that it uploads these logs to S3 every 5 minutes. In the next module coming up, you'll learn more about the transaction log. It's very important to note that you can only restore to a point in time from a backup within your retention period. In order to see the latest point in which you can restore your database instance to, head over to your RDS database console. On your RDS database console, select automated backups. So currently I have only one snapshot in place, right? However, my latest restore point is 5.16pm UTC and my earliest restorable time was 1.41 UTC. This time was when the initial snapshot was completed for the database instance. In order to perform the point in time restore, select Actions, select Restore Point in Time. So you could select the latest restorable point in time or you can select a custom date and time. So I could restore to 1600 UTC. So when compared to a manual snapshot, you can't change the database engine. It's also important that you specify the DB identifier. So I'm going to call this MRX Restored. We don't need to change the instance configuration because it remained the same. However, if we check the option groups option, we'll see that it's using the default options. So under additional configuration, the DB parameter group and the option group is set to the default options. So for this instance, if I had created additional option group or parameter groups and assigned them to the database, when I am performing the restore, I would have to change the default option and parameter group here. For the time zone, you would want to ensure you are maintaining the time zone that you are working in. So far now, I am keeping no preference. And once you review all your configurations and you are comfortable, select Restore to Point in Time. The status of the database will be in a creating state for a few minutes until the restoration is completed. So the restore was complete and a backup is now in progress. So now you should be able to connect to your database instance by just grabbing the endpoint and specify the username and password from the instance which the database was restored. One thing to keep in mind is that if you did not change the publicly accessible, you will not be able to access the database. In the next lecture, you'll be learning how to delete an RDS database snapshot.